ever thought of why you can send your messages to your friends? Or watch your favorite TV show at night? Or treat a cancer patient? For today's video, we will be recognizing those people behind these breakthroughs. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted accidentally discovered that electricity can produce magnetism. In one of his classes, he noticed that whenever he put the current carrying wire near the magnetic needle, the magnetic needle deflects, and it means that there is a presence of magnetic field. His discovery triggered the minds of many scientists, and one of those is Andre Marie Ampere. He discovered electrodynamics or electromagnetism, also known as Ampere's law. As you can see here in the picture, he discovered that the magnetic needle will behave with respect to the direction of the electricity flowing in a current carrying wire. Whenever there is a change in the direction of electricity in the current carrying wire, there is also the change in the direction of the magnetic field. His discovery and Orsted's discovery was used by Michael Faraday in his journey in electromagnetism. In 1831, he discovered electromagnetic induction, which means that changing magnetic field produces electricity. He used battery, two solenoids, and galvanometer to perform his experiment. This first solenoid, as you can see, is connected to a battery which means that this is being supplied by electricity. And this solenoid does not have any electricity, but it is connected to a galvanometer. As he put in and out this solenoid, which has electricity, and remember, electricity can produce magnetism. So if there is the movement of solenoid here, there is a change in magnetic field. And whenever he put this in and out of this big solenoid, a galvanometer deflects. The needle of the galvanometer deflects. So it means that there is the production of electricity. His discovery of electromagnetic induction made the way to the discovery of transformer, electric motor, and electric generator. Through the discoveries of the first three scientists, James Clerk Maxwell was very fascinated. He also added the concept of changing magnetic field can produce electricity and changing electric field can produce magnetism. With this concept, he proposed a unified theory of electricity, magnetism, and light by developing equations that showed their relationship that led to the discovery of electromagnetic waves. After Maxwell's death, Heinrich Hertz designed experimental evidence which strengthened the link of electromagnetic waves to light which resulted him discovering radio waves. So after Maxwell had died, he was inspired to strengthen Maxwell's discovery through his equation. So he designed many experiments to strengthen the link between electromagnetic waves and light. And through his experiments, he discovered the radio wave, which is a type of an electromagnetic wave. So let's have this timeline of development of electromagnetic wave in a nutshell. Let's see how 
this, scientists discovered electromagnetic wave. So first, we have Orsted, which discovered electricity can produce magnetism. And then afterwards, here is Andre Marie Ampere who discovered electrodynamics, which is responsible for the magnetic effect based on the direction of current. We have here Michael Faraday who discovered electromagnetic induction. Maxwell who discovered electromagnetic waves by developing equations and because he was fascinated with the first three scientists. And then lastly, we have Heinrich Hertz who designed experiments to prove the relationship of light with electromagnetic waves. So these five scientists worked hard to the development of electromagnetic wave, which we are using today. Now, what is an electromagnetic wave? Electromagnetic wave is produced by accelerating electrons. So it started with the movement of electrons that produces electricity. This is the combination of electric and magnetic field which are moving perpendicular with each other. So based on the concepts and discoveries of the first or of the five scientists that we have mentioned a while ago, it says that Changing magnetic field can produce electricity, and electricity can produce magnetism. That is why the combination of the two produced the electromagnetic wave. And remember, this wave, this electromagnetic wave, can only be produced when there is the enough energy for the electrons to move or to accelerate. This wave can travel in any medium, even in vacuum. When we say vacuum, it is an empty space. So we have examples, the outer space, there is no air. And the celestial bodies there are very far from each other. So it is considered as empty space. But electromagnetic waves can travel there. The speed is three times 10 raised to eight meters per second and denoted the C, which is the speed of light. So all electromagnetic waves has the speed of three times 10 raised to eight meters per second or equivalent with the speed of light. So the types of electromagnetic waves are arranged in increasing frequency in a continuum called electromagnetic spectrum. So as you can see here, these are the types of electromagnetic waves. We have the radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. So, para hindi nyo makalimutan ang pagkakasunod-sunod niyan, I have a mnemonic for you, which is Armivoxki, the first letter of each type. Armivoxki. Remember, this is increasing frequency. All of these electromagnetic waves are invisible to the eye except for the visible light. Okay, so in terms of wavelength, of frequency and energy, let us examine this picture. What have you noticed with the measurement of wavelength and frequency of the types of electromagnetic waves? Okay, very good. There is an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. As the wavelength becomes longer, the frequency becomes fewer. Okay? But if the wavelength becomes shorter, the frequency becomes higher. Okay, how about the relationship between wavelength 
and energy. Okay, very good. So they have the same relationship, which is inverse relationship. As the wavelength becomes longer, the energy becomes lower. Okay, but when the wavelength becomes shorter, the energy becomes higher. Okay, so energy here is in joules and wavelength here is in meters. How about frequency and energy? Very good. Their relationship is direct, which means that as frequency increases, energy also increases. So remember the relationship between wavelength and frequency that is inverse. Same with wavelength and energy. But frequency and energy has a direct relationship. Knowing the amount of frequency, wavelength, and energy of each type of electromagnetic wave, we must take those into consideration so that our exposure to each type of electromagnetic wave can be managed. Remember, if the frequency gets higher, the risk is also higher. So those electromagnetic waves that has higher frequencies must not be exposed to our body in a long time because there will be a negative effect in that in our body okay now we know why or why are we able to do these activities now on our next video we will be focusing on how does these activities are possible okay so thank you for listening for today's video i hope you enjoyed and learned something from this thank you and god bless